Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches, the channel where we usually talk about Rolex, but not always, because I also like cheaper watches, and today we're going to talk about one of those. But before we jump into the meat and potatoes of this, this can of worms, this beautiful brand new, to me, Seiko that I have purchased, let's go ahead and get the quick fist watch check out of the way, and here it is! Today, in fact, I am <laughs> wearing the Seiko Sawtooth. Now, this is not the perfect example. I just managed to snag this one on eBay, relatively inexpensive, so I will kind of talk you through the flaws. One of the things that you can see here is it's got a giant strap gap that needs to be closed up, so I need to size this sucker. And um, yeah, probably gonna take it to the watchmaker. It's got collars and pins in there, and um, this one has proven to be very tricky, more so than the usual Seiko bracelet for me. So before we come back and talk about the owner experience, let's get into the bright, brilliant sunshine and let's kind of really look this watch over and dig through its specs. And then I'm gonna come back and talk to you about the owner experience. Well, hey guys, here we are taking a look at the Seiko Sawtooth in blue with a slight, um, if you can make that out in the light. I mean, it does have this beautiful sunray blue, but it also, oh, if I twist it just right, the wavy dial pattern emerges. It's somewhat reminiscent of the older Omega Seamaster. Just a beautiful thing. And uh, of course, as I was saying, the loom is in completely nuts. Let's go ahead and knock out um, the specs, and then we will quickly talk about these various design cues, which are sticking out all over the place. Very notable watch. Okay, so first we're going to measure the outer. This, 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 what we're looking at right here is a shroud which is protecting the watch head as well as the very notable sawtooth buzzsaw looking bezel. But what we will do is we're just going to measure from edge to edge of the shroud. And uh, man, it is freaking huge. It is uh, 45, 46, 47 millimeters. Okay, from side to side, although the bezel is quite a bit smaller. The bezel is more like 40, 41 millimeters, okay? But uh, this is the size that you're going to notice at 47. That being said, because it's lug to lug is very short, um, it, it wears very well, as you'll see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Okay, let's get in here and measure a lug to lug. That's only about a 44 lug to lug. And um, of course, this end link sticks out a little bit further. The crown, it's seven millimeters. It's heavily knurled, easily grippable. What you're looking at here with these screws are hex screws that fix the bracelet to the shroud. Look at that dial, absolutely incredible. And of course, bear in mind that this has neither gained nor lost even a quarter second in, uh, in about 72 hours. So pretty amazing. And you got a luminous pip here. Now the bezel action on this one is a little bit compromised because it's extra stiff. Let me, let me shift it so I can get a grip here. I will bring it up to the microphone. It is extremely um, smooth and creamy. It is reminiscent, really the, the watch that I have that this is closest to would be my Grand Seiko Diver. It's just a little stiffer. I probably need to run it under some warm water or take it into the bathtub or, you know, potentially hit that with one tiny little bit of grease. Um, I'm not super handy, so I'd rather not pop the bezel off. But some of you who are very knowledgeable know how to take your watches apart. I'm not one of those guys. Speaking of not being one of those guys of taking the watches apart, this is a very tricky bracelet to size. This is, uh, this is all held together with, uh, with friction pins and collars. Now, I have done Seiko collar and friction pin before, but the problem I had with this one was when I took out the first friction pin, I couldn't get the collar back into the hole. It expanded a little bit, and I, I had to go to the watchmaker. But I got to go back to the watchmaker because I should have had him remove one or two additional links, and I, and I didn't get around to doing that. Okay. Guys, the design of this watch, it's extremely bold. You're going to love it or you're going to hate it. Personally, I love it, and I like it a whole lot better than the uh, Tuna 
to which this is somewhat related. I don't actually know why they discontinued this watch in favor of the Tuna. The Tuna is, um, it, it doesn't have these little lugs. See that little lug here? The Tuna is just like basically a round can, as like a tuna can, you know, directly on a rubber strap or a bracelet. I hate rubber straps. My wrist is just not happy with any rubber strap, but yet I typically like bracelets. The other thing that I adore about this watch besides the loom is the fact that it has the day and the date complication. I am forever losing track of what day it is, so I absolutely love having that information on my wrist at all times. And of course, then there's the loom. When we walk back indoors, even in, you know, even in a lighted room, this is going to be like blowing like an incredible amount of loom. Well, you can't see it right here, but trust me, we're going to go take a look at it in a few minutes, and it is powerful. Now this comes in a few different iterations. There is a, an orange dial. There is a basket weave carbon fiber looking dial. There is a flat black dial. And maybe there's more. Those are the ones that I know about and everybody who sells one of these on eBay says that their dial is the rarest. So they're probably all doing a lot of wishful thinking. When you look really close here, what you can see, let me get my little pointer out guys. Um, when you get really close in there, what you can see, ah, good view of it here now, there's actually a chapter ring to which the indices and all that loom are affixed. And I got to just bend it again to get, there we go. And uh, that's, a, that's an insert that rides just slightly above that wavy blue dial, like maybe a millimeter, like maybe it's raised just like a millimeter. You have to look very close to see it. It doesn't sort of like get in your face when you're wearing the watch, but it, it adds a certain layer or level of depth to the watch and you have to just catch it just right. But man, it's a really pretty thing. I also particularly like this style of Seiko bracelet, although my clasp is a little bit bent, doesn't, doesn't rest flat. So I have to decide if I want to, you know, play with it a little bit with a plier. So, you know, I'm a little afraid to do that. It doesn't bother me that much. And, you know, based on the price that I paid for this, well, I'm not really unhappy, although maybe I will keep an eye out for another. These guys are getting a difficult to find. They are not on eBay all the time. Maybe they're in the forums. Usually they sell for in the $400 range. I just got lucky and uh, got mine for under $200. And I saw a carbon fiber one go last week on eBay for under $250. So if you're patient, maybe you can poach a really nice example of the Seiko Sawtooth. I can't imagine why they discontinued this. I really enjoy it. Let's take a look at a wrist shot. Now, bear in mind, I've got a seven and a quarter inch wrist. And um, because it's got a short lug to lug, sorry about the airplane guys, because it's got a short lug to lug, it does not look oversized. And um, it's, you know, it's relatively thin and those downturn little lugs hug the wrist. So although it, 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 it's a bold watch, but it's not ridiculous. And I think some of the some of the larger tuna cans are just a little silly looking. When, or when you get up into like some of the giant like 50 millimeter G-Shocks that are like 15 millimeters thick, they just kind of look nuts. But this makes a statement. It's kind of bold, but it's not too much in your face. Is it a lover to leave it watch? I'm sure it is. Most of you are gonna hate it, but I love it. If you love it, tell me about that in the comments so I don't feel all alone. Now, I know that most of you who watch this channel regularly are aficionados of the Rolex brand, and so am I, but every once in a while, don't you like to eat some junk food? <laughs> You know, now if you are a Seiko aficionado, please don't take offense at this. I am so in love with this watch. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the case for a quartz diver from Seiko, an older discontinued one, because that's exactly what we have here. First of all, I don't care what you have in the way of Patek Philippe, Aldemar, Piguet, Vacheron, et Constantin, as well as Rolex, you need a grab-and-go diver. Something that is rough, ready, tough, that is just going to be accurate and that you do not have to wind up, keep in a watch winder, dig out, set, you know, mess with. And that is exactly what this is. Now, the other thing that we have to do here is the loom shot, okay? So before we conclude this, I'm gonna take you into a dark spot together. We'll do it, we'll do it together and we will take a look at the loom because it's an utter loom monster. I have never seen anything even vaguely like it ever in my life. 
Guys, I am completely in love with this watch. Okay, it's got some flaws, but the this watch, it seats beautifully. It's only 12 something millimeters thick, so it just sits extremely well. I, I have been timing the watch now for something on the order of about three days. It has not lost or gained even a half a second. It is plus or minus slash zero, which is like outrageous. This the 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 accuracy of this watch is nuts. Now, is that bad? It's it because it's quartz? I don't know. I'm really I have a personal OCD problem, and one of my issues kind of relates to keeping track of how timely the watch is, right? So if, if I have a watch that runs a little fast, I don't mind that too much. Maybe every few days I pull the crown for a couple seconds. But if I have a watch that runs slow, I am like constantly monitoring it, I'm constantly adjusting it, and that cannot be good for the mechanism. It just isn't. So I really kind of wanted to get something that was big, brawny, bold, kind of aggressive looking with like very manly design cues um, and yet would just be like zero trouble and uh, yep I've discovered that in the sawtooth they make this watch in a variety of dial colors if you know you know but they, they're older and discontinued now so I, I think a lot of people don't know about this they know more about its slightly younger cousin the tuna anyway guys if you own one of these watches let's talk about it in the comments if you think I'm crazy well you could tell me that too let's go ahead and take a look at the loom right now honestly I have had a lot of really really beautiful loomy watches including loom tech but this thing it holds a candle it takes a back seat to no one this is the biggest loom monster I have ever run into in my life what's your loomiest watch take a look at this well guys, I just went straight into the house, into a dark room so I could show you the loom. I never hit it with the UV flashlight. This is just from that few minutes of being outside. And um, if I hit it with the UV, it's gonna get even crazier. You know, this is one of those watches where if you're not careful at night, if you like fully charge it, you had better put your arm under a pillow for a while or you are going to annoy your partner because it's like a flashlight. It's totally like a torch. And this thing, naturally it dims out a little bit as time goes on, but trust me, if you hit this thing with a charge right before you go to bed, you are going to be able to read it all night long. I absolutely love that. Well guys, I know this is a watch that is not for everybody, but I think I have discovered my grab and go dive watch beater. What do you guys think? This is Goldberg, peace out. Guys.